Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. You know what? LSTMs, GRUs, and recurrent neural networks in general are definitely losing some favor in terms of time series prediction. Even though these were sort of the original deep learning and even traditional with Elman and Jordan networks being introduced for time series. But guess what? Convolution neural networks can do this stuff too. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. You normally think of convolution neural networks as images, or at least you did a couple of years ago. CNNs are being applied to all sorts of, of things now, time series in particular. And a lot of recent research is really giving CNNs the upper hand for some of the really complex time series and natural language processing things. So I'm going to show you how to make use of temporal CNNs. Keras doesn't have as advanced of pre-built libraries for these as I, as I would have hoped. One of the best ones is, I have the link to it here, but it's currently not available for TensorFlow 2.0. I suspect that'll be rectified by the time the semester starts, so I'll give you an update on that when we reach this point in the semester. So for this part, what we're going to do is we're going to take those two examples that I gave you before on time series. So this time series sort of toy data set that I have here, and then also the sunspots example. And we'll show that both of those that we did in LSTM, you can use almost exactly the same code and just swap out the CNN for the LSTM. The data comes in in really the same format. I told you about setting up the 3D tensor for the input, still applies. We're setting up the 3D tensor here, and this is the same example. This is training on potentially a car going in front of, looking at just a small sort of laser beam. So we can see, okay, the car of color one is here. And so that's why the Y classifies as one. The car of color two is here. It classifies to two is here. I, I discussed this data set in part two of module 10, if you if you want more detail on, on that. It's, a, it's just a toy data set to show you really how to use a LSTM, except in this case, we've swapped out the LSTM. We're using the Conv1D, and that is essentially the the temporal convolution net that's built into Keras. Now the more advanced ones of these, and I'll, I'll update you on where that library is at when we reach this point in the semester, is using something called residual, which is very much what we used in ResNet. For now, and for this entire semester, we will use Conv1D. I'm not gonna swip, swap that out at you on the last minute because I always lock the versions at the beginning of the semester. Believe me, TensorFlow and Keras can evolve considerably in a semester. The stuff is moving at the speed of light. So let me go ahead and run this. It's going to train just like it did with the LSTM. And the idea is I could put a car anywhere on any of these and it would learn that, okay, two of these together, or maybe even three of these together, maybe it's a long car, can be detected as a two or as a three or whatever, whatever color it is. No RGB encoding at all, just one is one color, two is another color. Again, this is a toy example. And it looks like it has trained. Okay, so let's try it out. I have the car kind of halfway off the off the edge of the vector. We'll run it. It still says that it's a one type of car. If I move the car, maybe it took it took the picture earlier and it was over here it should still return a one. Works very similar to the to the previous example that was using a LSTM. Sunspots. If you want the full description on the Sunspot dataset, refer back to part two of this, of this module. But it's essentially the number of spon sunspots per month. And we're trying to predict those because that goes up and down. I have the links to the data files here because the data file is provided by by the government, so you need to download this and actually copy it to, to your to your folder. I put it in the data directory, but you can put it really anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and run this. I already have it loaded. This is what the 
sunspot data looks like. We're going we're dealing mainly with the the year month and looking at the the sunspot value now in these early years they don't necessarily always have the value and here we're trimming those values that do hit so the early early years that are missing the observations we're going to split it into test and train anything before 2000 is train anything after 2000 is test we're going to convert those to sequences just like we've done previously this is just time series encoding so we are dealing with sequence size of 25 so we are breaking this up into groups of 25 and then we try to predict the 26th one and there's a lot of different groups of 25 that we can pull from that data. We can look and see what the X-Train looks like. So it has those sequences in there, the 25. So that's how many sunspots initially. So 253, 240, all these sunspots. And then Y is just an array. And that would be the sunspot that would come next after the train sequence had come in. This is where we build the model and train. This does use early stopping. I'll just fast forward this. So let's run an RMSE on this using the training set. So let's run a RMSE on the test set to see how well this is performing. RMSE of 21 is actually pretty decent. That's the number of sunspots. These are in the hundreds, so it's reasonable accuracy. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.